So Serena's pretty mid. Or Zarina? I don't know. But I've challenged myself to make it a crazy sweeper, or I guess try. Stat-wise, it's got a nice 120 attack, but that's literally it. It does, however, have an amazing ability called Queenly Majesty, which blocks any priority moves used against it. We can use Stab Trailblaze to boost our speed to make it actually kinda quick, and then run a Surprise Endure to ensure that we live in attack at 1 HP. This then pops a Lychee Berry, which boosts our attack by one stage, and also makes Acrobatic's power double since we used up our item. Chillin' at 1 HP makes us a target for priority, which obviously Serena doesn't care about, and we can also bob some stuff with some triple axles. Could this actually work? I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try. Look, sometimes when I cook, I cook a little too hard, and this very well could be one of those times. But hey, if you're into bad Pokemon doing kinda not bad stuff, you should consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. Now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the little baby Palafin. This little fella is definitely not gonna come back in here looking all buff later. And I decided to lead off with the Lycanroc. So this Lycanroc is there to lay down some Lycanrocs. I basically just wanna set up my Stealth Rock. And the problem becomes I need to decide if I want this thing to flip turn my Focus Sash away. And I decide I'm just gonna lay down the Stealth Rock. I kinda of wanna get knocked down to my Sash anyway. Just because then I can go for some cheeky endeavors and then priority with the Accelerate Rock to finish stuff off. So they do go for that flip turn. It actually doesn't knock me down to my Sash, but it, close enough. I do live with four, and now they can switch into whatever they like. So as they decide to go into the Excadrill here, I imagine this little fella wants to rapid spin away all the hard work I did in laying down my little baby Stealth Rocks. So I just decide I'm going to go for the close combat. I'm faster than this thing, and they probably don't see it coming, and it turns out you mess with the big dog, you get bit. Or... I guess punched in the face by a dog. So that actually just takes care of the Excadrill and they probably just didn't see the close combat coming. That's actually nice because now they don't have a way to get rid of my hazards and also Excadrill is kind of a bit of a problem and now it's taken care of. So the problem now becomes that the Palafin is in fact buff now and this thing is quite scary. So with that zero to hero, it becomes an absolute beast. And what I'm worried about here is a priority jet punch. So I want to conserve the Lycanroc just to be able to come back in and go for endeavors later and potentially just stir some stuff up. So I can just go right into the Aloma Mola, who is in fact the anti-love disc because this little fella never dies. So they do go for that jet punch, shows off the priority, which is fine. And at this point, I imagine there's no way they stay in against this thing. I know that you know, Palafin doesn't have any coverage against my bulky fish ass. So I just decided to predict them to switch and then I can go for the flip turn myself, which is gonna allow them to switch into the Rotom Mo, which is fine because now I can get myself a nice little bit of momentum in terms of bringing in a matchup against this thing. So I have a lot of diff different options. This team kind of has a lot of setup, but I decide now seems like a pretty good time to use the Lycanroc here. I can bring this in because I know that I'm gonna be faster and I can go for an Endeavor, which is going to knock down anything they wanted to switch into or stay in with uh, down to four HP. So the Rotom does in fact just stay in, takes that Endeavor and then goes for the Volt Switch, which is amazing because now with that thing at 4 HP, it is no longer able to come back in on the Stealth Rock. It's just going to essentially be a free kill on the Rotom there, which does make Serena's job a little bit easier in the back, which is nice, but there's still some huge threats that they have to deal with here. And the main thing that I'm worried about is basically always Blaziken. This little guy's standing over there on his tiptoes, and we know the shenanigans that these things get up to, which is going to be Swords Dances and Speed Boosts and very scary stuff. So they do go for that Swords Dance here which is going to allow the Aloma Mola to at least get off the Scald. Main idea is to be able to get it down to below half, which is exactly what's going to happen. But after that Swords Dance, I know they have coverage in the form of things like a Thunder Punch, but honestly, once again, this fish, while I am mostly specially defensive, I do have defensive investment, and that allows me to live a Thunder Punch, and then just throw some more hot water, and we're just going ahead and frying that chicken up. So that takes care of that spicy watered down KFC and now we're moving pretty nice. Also in the back Serena's just looking better and better. It's one of those mons that you kind of need to find a position as, as it's not going to generally sweep an entire team but it can catch people by surprise. So they actually go into the Rotom forgetting about the Stealth Rock actually just dies and then they're like well damn now instead I'll go into the Flutter Main which now becomes kind of one of the bigger things to worry about here. Flutter Main, always extremely scary. They're now down to half of their team left, and as I don't have much that wants to switch into this thing, as there's not really anything in the damn game that wants to deal with this, a Thunderbolt does in fact just finish off the Alamomola, but I, after Blaziken being taken care of and things like that, 
I kind of did my job there. So with the 11 ball going down, I can now have a nice little momentum switch and bring in whatever I like. So I decided to go into the Raikou here. Because I'm thinking I can potentially take not that much from a Moonblast. Go for a Calm Mind, which allow me to take the next one and then just be nice with the Raikou. But after that Moonblast damage, it's looking like, yeah, even after this Calm Mind and then the Leftovers recovery, it's going to be close on whether this thing can grab a kill or not. So Raikou had the potential for a little late game sweep here, and now as I'm looking at it, I'm like, well, I might as well just stay in as I just decide to go for the Thunderbolt. Now you will notice I do actually go for the Terra here. That is because I toggled it on for a second, thinking I toggled it off, and I did not. I'm stuck going for a Terra Fairy, which absolutely does not help me at all here, which is kind of just some nonsense. A lot of the time I just kind of click that R button, which toggles it for a second, and then I swear to I click it so fast that I thought it turned back off, it did not. Now I waste my Terra, and that is going to throw a wrench a little bit <laughs> in the plans here. Not necessarily the hugest deal, because I don't think anything else in the back necessarily needs it that bad, but it would have been nice to save, and I have once again gone and goofed that one. So, finally, it is time. I decide to bring in the Serena. Now, that's because I should be able to take at least one attack from this thing. We also know this thing didn't have a booster energy speed, and if it's not timid, after a Trailblaze, I should be able to outspeed here. So... I'm going to go right for that Trailblaze, and we're going to go ahead and, you know, blaze up a damn trail here. As they actually end up switching that thing out, they're going to bring in the Three-Headed Dragon. So, Tripod Dragon is ordinarily pretty scary, and however, after a Trailblaze, barring this thing being Choice Scarfed, I should be able to outspeed, and you already know I have the coverage with the Triple Axel, which is always scary because it's like, is it going to connect first of all? Is it going to hit three times? We're going to find out. I do go for that Triple Axel with that big booty, and that's gonna take care of it. Actually, I do get the three hits, and down goes the High Dragon, which is fantastic, because now we're actually in a great position here. I have the speed boost, and we still have that Lychee Berry in the back pocket. Also, their final two Pokemon gonna be the Fluttermane, along with the Palafin. So, time to see if Serena can actually make it happen. So, as they now go back into the Fluttermane here, it's kind of their best option, and honestly, their scariest. So, I just decided to go for that Endure, and it's time to see if we can clutch it out with a Serena that no one's going to see coming. So, they do actually end up going for the Terra Fire here, which is quite frightening because not only does it mean they now have a Fire-type Terra Blast, but also they resist, you know, the two attacks they've seen. So, I go for the Endure, which is going to allow me to guarantee I can live with 1 HP, and they do have that Terra Blast, which with the freaking candles on his head is definitely going to, it's going to hurt a little bit. But, we are able to live with that 1 HP, which is now going to activate that Lychee Berry. So we have our speed boost, we now have our attack boost, and now we are basically in full Serena form at this point. I can now go for that Acrobatics, which is in fact boosted because I don't have an item any longer, and it turns out it is gonna be a modest Fluttermane allowing us to outspeed, and that is gonna be able to take care of it, which is extremely clutch. So Serena coming around and finishing off half of the team, at least hopefully, as their final mod is gonna be the Palafin. Now, there is one fun thing about Palafin here, and is that looking at this thing with 1 HP, what looks really enticing is that Jet Punch priority and being able to just finish off that, you know, final HP. However, we know Queenly Majesty is not going to be letting that happen as they go for the Jet Punch, it is going to activate the ability. You cannot priority move, which is why this strategy does have a pretty decent shot at working. And after a Lychee Berry, a Trailblaze does take care of the Palafin, and that is how you turn things around with freaking Serena over here. We got some sass, and we're here to show it. So that's going to do it for game number one. Kind of just a goofy game. Had a fun time. But also, the fun is not over, because we now have game number two. Listen, if you've stuck around this far and are enjoying the video, you should consider hitting that like button. It really does help out the channel, and it just it takes you a second to click it, so you might as well. Now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the game. All right, so this time, my opponent's going to go ahead and lead off with the Metagross, and I have dog. So, we get a little bit of intel from this thing being a lead Metagross, and that it's more than likely going to be like a Stealth Rock one, as opposed to kind of a Trailblaze and potential setup, so it feels kind of good with that. And turn one, they're actually just going to go for the Bullet Punch. Now, that's going to break my Focus Sash, but not going to be low enough to the point where I'm super confident with like an Endeavor here. And as I set up my Stealth Rock, I'm like, alright, that's mostly fine. I'm going to go ahead and switch out here, because of course, they don't want to be Bullet Punched to death. And I still have some value, you know, left in the doggo. So, as I switch here, I'm going to go into the Moltres. I got the Moltres on the squad here. And it actually ends up being a nice little switch into this. Because, first of all, it can't really touch me. And then when they do touch me, it has the chance to activate that Flame Body. Which 
literally never ever happens. So I'm convinced that this Moltres just doesn't have enough flames on him or something. And I imagine they probably switch out here. I, I just kind of go for the U-turn expecting the switch, but it turns out they're going to stay in and they're going to go for the defensive Terra and make this boy a nice little fountain Xbox 360. And that is kind of scary. You know, it, as it does suck in the kind of short term, in the long term, I'm always kind of happy to see them go for a Terra before me. It means that there's going to be no surprises later on. And in a team based with like a lot of kind of setup options like I have currently, that feels kind of fine. So I now can switch into whatever I like on the U-turn. And I imagine I'm going to go into this arena because either they go for a Terra Blast or something like that. And I can take that. Now it turns out they're just going to go for that Stealth Rock, which is fine because now Serena comes in essentially for free. And this matchup is great. They can't bullet punch me. I obviously now have the coverage, and it's time to just kind of set up this thing and see how far we can get with it. So I go for the Trailblaze here, as obviously I need the speed, and it's kind of an interesting dynamic because it's like I need to run Jolly with that like speed boost. A lot of the time you're not even faster than stuff, so I, I need to get the Trailblaze going for sure, as they actually end up bringing in the Ogre Pond, and this Firegrass fella is obviously not really too concerned, you know, about a um, about a Trailblaze there. So. While it looks like I don't have anything to hit this with, I just decide I do, obviously. I'm gonna go for the Endure here and hope that they go for that Ivy Cudgel. I need to get down to my Lychee Berry to not only activate that attack boost, but also get rid of the item and then boost up the acrobatics. As they do go for that Ivy Cudgel, it's gonna knock me down to one, which is perfect, because now it's bringing lunchtime and we have ourselves now a nice little boosted attack and we're faster after we blazed the old trail here. So I'm just gonna go right for that acrobatics. It definitely kills here. But they actually end up switching out. They want to conserve the Ogre Pond, which does make sense. The thing is a massive threat. And the good news is at least it cannot tear because of this fella. So they decide to go back into the Metagross. And I know exactly what they're thinking here, which is good. As I go for that Acrobatic, it's not going to do a whole lot to this thing. But also, being at 1 HP, I'm just a sitting duck for a priority move to come and just, you know, ruin my day. Except a lot of people, first of all, just don't even deal with Serena's a lot to know that Queenly Majesty exists. Or they just forget as they go for the bullet punch. You cannot prioritize my ass. I mean, I guess you can. But I'm going to go now for the Trailblaze, which does finish off the Metagross, which is fantastic. And uh, that takes care of uh, not only a big threat, but also the Terra with it. So that feels pretty good. Now, the bad news is they can switch into whatever they like here. And there's basically one Mon on the team that allows them to not get entirely swept by this arena. And that is this freaking Jigglypuff with a haircut. I, they go into the Jigglypuff here, or Screamtail, and it does actually all activate a Protosynthesis, which gives it a speed boost. So, with the speed boost, I'm thinking maybe this is like an offensive one, and if it doesn't have HP investment, does a Terra boosted Acrobatics after a Leechy Berry, like, do enough to maybe grab a kill here? First of all, probably not. But I'm here to get Serena to do as much as I possibly can, so I'm going to go for that Terra regardless and <laughs> hope that maybe they go for something like the Screams. Um, so I put the balloons on my head looking ridiculous. It's going to boost the stab on the acrobatics. And as I get a whole bunch of damage, it's not quite going to be enough to take care of the Scream Tail. So that is unfortunate because now a Psychic Fangs does take care of me. And down goes the Serena. So I basically wanted to try to get as much value out of this thing as I can. And this is a great example of a game that goes to show... The set is, if you try to go for it too early, there's often going to be an easy way to stop it, but it's it's such a fun thing to do regardless, so it, uh, a lot of, it's not going to get entire sweeps against people who at least know what they're doing. So now I decide to go into the Young Goose, which is because, I don't know, I'm using a, or no, sorry, there's a Gumshoes. I don't know what the hell this thing's deal is, but I do know that a Body Slam would have killed if you didn't go for a damn Reflect, which is annoying, but... So it's like a speedy one with screens, and I I mostly just hate that this thing stopped my Serena sweep. So at least I can finish it off with another body slam after being faster once the para happens. And I'm just chilling here with my hands behind my back looking like a boss because, hey, I got gumshoes to get a kill, which is honestly always, like, impossible. So at least that's kind of fun. Now, what also sucks is that they have this thing, and... Stasler is a massive threat to pretty much my entire squad. So I don't have much that wants to switch into this. At least I figured, you know, kind of gumshoes is the best thing for me to let be sacked here. So I did do a brick break, which is fine because now I get myself a nice little free switch into the Moltres here. So I come in, I got my heavy duty boots on, although you can't see them. Yeah, I don't get hit by some stealth rock, which is nice. And at this point, I'm just going to go for the air slash. I want to make kind of the safe play here. Um, but they actually go for the U-turn, which does touch me, but does not activate a Flame Body. So one of these days, I swear to God, I'm going to get Flame Body. And it's going to be... Wow, it's going to be crazy. So 
As I go for the, uh, the air slash here, they actually decide to bring in the Miss Maggie. And Miss Magius is kind of a threat here. I know it's going to be faster than me, so I'm figuring I should probably switch out. I know that Aloma Mola can easily kind of take hits here. And also, I'm feeling like Moltres is going to be kind of one of my best answers to that Sneasler. So I want to conserve that as I go into the big old fish. This thing, again, its role on this squad is to be a big old punching bag and then potentially pivot. As they go for the power gem, that's going to do basically nothing because I'm a fish with an assault vest on, and uh, we love to see that. I obviously know this thing does have the potential for Thunderbolt, but I can take, like, two of them because it's fine. So they actually go for the Shadow Ball. Reveals does not, in fact, have Thunderbolt coverage, but I take it nicely, and then after some uh, some Life Orb chip, I can easily finish it off with the Scald. Or actually, it does. So, sorry, it doesn't finish it off with the Scald. Holy shit, this thing... That's a problem with Aloma Mole. It doesn't hit hard in return at all. But what it does do well is just stay in and take attacks all day. So at least it's going to finish itself off with the Life Orb. Which does kind of suck because now I just have to flip turn the air. And that means that then they can have a matchup and decide to switch in whatever they want to uh, versus the Aloma Mola. So I did take more damage than I would have hoped to here. As uh, now they go into the Gudra. So thick ass Gudra just dripping in yellow goo over there is kind of annoying and that's just because I don't have much left to hit this thing on a physical side to uh, like basically try to pull this game back this thing being so bulky is incredibly annoying but what I can do is this this is one of the reasons why we love the late game Lycanroc I can bring this thing in I also take some stealth rock chip which is perfect because I am faster I can now go for an endeavor bring him down to my amount of HP which is amazing because that's the chip that I needed on this thing and while I do go down to a dragon pulse that's totally fine all I needed was just enough damage on this on this Gudra to be able to threaten it with one of my two special attackers left and also I realized hey Lucario looks pretty damn nice in this spot and that's because I have the potential to set up Gudra is one of those mods that it feels like it's kind of a setup fodder guy, where it's like, I can easily just kind of set up in this thing's face. Now I'm going to go for the nasty plot here, and uh, with that in the priority with like thing with the uh, vacuum wave, I should be in a pretty good spot after this. So I go ahead and think some nasty, just demented thoughts that you would never even dream of. And as they go for a muddy water, it actually misses, which is great, because now I am basically in full form. I decide to go for a nasty plot again, but Pistachio is not going to be having none of that shit. Lucario basically puts them on the back foot to the point where they're going to go ahead and run, and that is going to be the end of the game. So, I thought that was just, again, another fun match, showing off some Queenly Majesty, and while it doesn't get, like, sometimes a crazy sweep, it can also just be still fun to use. So, listen, thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate all the support on the videos. You guys are absolutely amazing, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.